Hello friends. Welcome back to the S3 Cloud Hub YouTube channel. So in the previous video, we built the Node.js application using the Cloud9 IDE, a service provided by Amazon. But still, I noticed that some of you are not clear about Cloud9 yet. So in this talk, we will only discuss Cloud9. So without any further ado, let's get start the session. So AWS Cloud9. Basically, it is an integrated development environment IDE. A developer can use it to manage code via a browser and collaborate with other developers. So it is a cloud development environment and solves a lot of problems that come when developing with the cloud. Of course, this is now a unique thing. There are similar environments for the Azure cloud or for GCP cloud. And in fact, they all solve the same thing that you can develop internally the environment where your code will run. So in the case of Cloud9 what happens is, inside AWS, you can set up a virtual machine, and this virtual machine has several benefits for your laptop. One is permissions, so you can actually assign role-based permissions to it. To talk to the API, you can know it's communicating with other services, without having to manage those keys. So in terms of security, it solves a lot of problems. The other thing is traffic, so network traffic is much faster because you're basically opening a shell inside the actual place you communicate. So if your laptop is dirty, a wireless connection, then somewhere it will have a lot of communication problems. But if you open an instance, inside the actual environment you're working in, you're literally communicating with the data, where it should be. Then the another thing is, there's deep integration with other services. And that's really another key aspect of something like Cloud9 is that, you can deeply integrate with the Cloud Lambda environment which is serverless capability, or you can also deeply integrate with running command line tools. So in short, if you're developing for a cloud environment, you'll most likely have a much better one experience using native tools, in this case AWS Cloud9. So let's go ahead and check it out in the management console. So to start using AWS Cloud9 IDE, we need to sign into our AWS account. So here as you can see, this is my AWS management console. And now here, I am going to search for a service called Cloud9. As you can see, here is the service that we want. So let's open it. And now what we can do is, we are going to create a new environment. So let's go ahead and select create environment. It's usually a good idea to give it some meaningful name. So in this case we'll call it as Cloud Computing and then Demo. Then here we can write a description, but it is an optional thing, so we can ignore it for now, and click on next. So here are a few things that are key to note us, that most likely the defaults will be good enough for you. Especially if you are a student, and you can leave the defaults, that said I'll go ahead and point out a few of these keys function. So this section says to create a new EC2 instance, that allows you to actually run new virtual environment. Then there are several other advanced options. That you can choose from as well. Now in terms of instance type, most of the time, this free tier eligible T2 micro is a good choice, if you're going through and developing things, and getting to know educational projects. Now that being said one really awesome feature of Cloud9 is, if I go ahead and say other type of instance. So here I could decide, that I want to use a really big machine. Most people don't have access to this type of hardware, but you can actually spin one, only be charged when you're using the instance, and actually testing some really expensive operation by doing this parallel computation. So that's also one of the really key features of the Cloud9, that is the ability to size your instance to many different types, but for now I am just go with the default 1T2 micro. Then in terms of platform, again it is probably a good idea to leave it as default in most situations. So there is either Amazon Linux 2 which is recommended, Amazon Linux Amy, or an Ubuntu server. A lot of times, the defaults are going to give you the best experience when you are working on an educational project. So here again, we will leave it as default. Another thing to point out is that, when it comes to cost saving settings, the default settings are nice in that. So when you exit your machine, and you close your web browser, then it will hibernate automatically, it will save all your settings, and you won't be charged for these services. So this is a great feature. As well as this is also a key thing to highlight, is this IAM role. 
So one of the benefits of using AWS Cloud9 is that any account you are logged into will have roles be linked for you. So you don't have to manage keys for API calls. You'll be able to talk to services like S3 and copy data back and forth. So it's really key thing you get for free with Cloud9. So once I go through here and say next, then it will take say 30 to 45 seconds to spin up. Okay, so now our AWS Cloud9 has spun up. Now let's go through some of the basic features. So the first thing to realize is this environment tab over here on the left. And here, if you notice that it says tilde environment, it means if I do ls here. So as you can see, there is only the readme file located, so it is the root of the drive. Then here if I type pwd or print working directory. So yes, you can see that I want to do all my work in home, ec2 user, then environment. Now another thing to be aware, we can also upload and download files. So here if I right click on this file, so here you can see, we have download option to download this file to our local machine. Here also we can upload the files as well. So in the file section, we can see the option here to upload the local files. So guys this is the key feature, and really a super useful thing, that I can do if I want to work with the data in this environment. So guys these is what Cloud9 is. Now I hope you all guys understand the concept. So guys, that's it for this video, I hope you liked it. I will see you in the next lecture. If you have any question or any doubt, feel free to ask in the comment section below, I will answer you as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.